Welcome to graphing rational functions. In the previous videos, you've learned about things such as discontinuities and end behavior asymptotes. We're going to need that information to help us graph these rational functions. Before I begin, I just want to point out how important it is to make sure that the rational function is in factored form before you try to graph it. All of the examples that I'm going to give you are already in factored form to save time. So to begin, on our first example, let's take a notice of the EBA. I think that's the easiest thing to figure out. So the degree of the top is 1, the degree of the top, sorry, of the bottom is 2, right? Because if I actually put that in standard form, x times x, that would give us, give us x squared. That's quadratic. So the numerator has a smaller degree than the denominator. That means our EBA is at y equals 0. So that's easy to start with. The next thing I like to do is look at discontinuities. So notice that the factors in the numerator and the denominator don't have any similarities. So we know that there are no holes. That means that the remaining factors in the denominator must be vertical asymptotes. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 3. Let's put those on the graph. Excellent. You'll notice that your graph has what looks like six quadrants now. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the first time we've graphed anything that looks like this. I just wanted to point that out because looking at these quadrants actually makes things really helpful later on. The next thing I would find would be the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are very easy to find. I'm just going to change color here. If you look at the numerator, if you have a fraction and you want to know where does a fra or what values makes a fraction equal to zero, the numerator would have to be zero. And as long as the denominator is not zero, then it doesn't really matter what's in the denominator. So what makes this numerator equal to zero? Well, that would be four. So we have x intercepts, only one of them, at four comma zero. Another reason I like to change points at this stage is because the blue, right, those are asymptotes, they're not actually points on our graph. What I just put at 4, 0, that actually is a part of the function. There is a point at 4, 0. The next one I like to try to find is the y-intercept. And y-intercepts are easy. We're just going to substitute 0 in for x and see what we get. So on the top I'd get negative 4. And in my new, uh, denominator, I'd get 1 times negative 3, which simplifies to 4 thirds. So my y-intercept is at 0, comma, 4 thirds, so a little bit more than 1. So I'll put that right there. Excellent. Now I'm going to come back to that idea of these quadrants. Now, quadrants probably isn't a great word because that makes you think that there's four of them. So it's more like sections of the graph. So now take a look. Notice that this is our only x-intercept, which means that there can't be any other points along this EBA, right? So if I focus in on this y-intercept, that means that this portion of the graph must be between these two vertical asymptotes, because we can't cross them, and it can't cross the EBA. So it must look something like this. Now I'm not saying that it's a parabola, but the ends are definitely approaching infinity, right? And it's not crossing this EBA, like I said. That's the important part. Now, let's take a look at this x-intercept that was given. Do you think the graph approaches this vertical asymptote towards negative infinity, or do you think it goes towards it and approaches infinity? Well, if you think about a value that's a little bit greater than 3, right, between 3 and 4, let's see, will we get a positive value or will we get a negative value? So let's look at our, our fun function over here. If I plug in something between 3 and 4, 
this value will be negative. This value will be positive. This value will be positive. A negative over positive times positive is positive is going to result in a negative. So I know it's going to face this direction. In class, I'm going to talk about how I already know that from something else in the equation. But obviously, that's a nice way of doing it as well. Notice I didn't have to find an actual point. All I really cared about was if that value was positive or negative. Now remember that an EBA really stands for end behavior asymptote. So this graph is not going to keep increasing in this direction. It must come back down somewhere. We're not sure where. And it's going to have to approach 0 from above. So you see how I have that little bump in the graph, like a little maximum there? I don't know where it is, and I'm not claiming to. All I know is, is that it exists. All right. So now we've covered almost all of the sections of our graph. So now I'm going to look at this section over here. Notice how on this vertical asymptote at negative 1, this side's already pointing up. In class, I'm going to talk about how I know this side's already pointing down, or just like we did on the other side where we looked at a little number uh, greater than 3, like 3.1, I would find that this value is also negative. And I know that it's not going to cross the EBA in this area, so it's going to have to approach the EBA from below it. Again, you can check all these things by plugging in points, but my suggestion is learn why that's happening, and that way you won't have to substitute in values. So just a little recap. I found my EBA first, then I found my discontinuities, then I found my x and y intercepts. So let's try another example. All right, next example, we're looking at something again, it's already in factored form, and the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same. So that means that our EBA must be the leading coefficients. So that's y equals 2 over 1, so y equals 2. All right, time for discontinuities. Oh, look at this. We have x plus 1 in both the numerator and denominator. That means we have a hole. So we have a hole at negative 1 comma, let's see, this hole is going to be at 2 times, I'm plugging in negative 1 for x. So I get 2 times negative 4, so negative 8, over negative 3, which is 8 thirds. So negative 1 and 8 thirds, that's like 2 and something. Like there, about there. But we also have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Let's put that on the graph. OK. So we have our discontinuities on the graph. Let's go to some actual points like x-intercepts. So x-intercepts. I'm going to look at the numerator and figure out what makes it 0. Only one value, and that's 3. There's my x-intercept. How about a y-intercept? That's where we plug 0 in for x. So we would get 2 times negative 3 over negative 2, which reduces that to 3. So we have a y-intercept at 3. All right, so again, I'm going to look at these quadrants. And you can kind of see which quadrants the graph's going to show up in. I see this one right here. Right, you can kind of see how it's increasing towards infinity in that direction. And then we have this here. And then we have a point in this quadrant, which has to approach the EBA. That one's going to come in from below. And then this one is going to approach the vertical asymptote in this direction. Again, you can always test out points to see which direction it's going to go in. Also in class, I'm going to talk about how I knew the graph wouldn't cross the EBA. Keep that in mind. Let's try one more example. Okay. 
Obviously, I saved the best for last. Here we have the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. When you want to find a slanted asymptote or an oblique asymptote, you're going to have to put the numerator in standard form to do your division. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And we're going to do this division. I'm going to use synthetic division. And if you need help with that, obviously watch the video in the polynomials chapter. All right, there's our remainder, which doesn't matter. So my EBA is y equals x plus 5. So let's graph that line. So it is a y-intercept of 5, slope of 1. So it looks like that. Okay. Next up, discontinuities. So no factors are the same in the numerator and denominator, so there are no holes. That leaves us with a vertical asymptote. And again, I'm looking at just the denominator for that, and that would be x equals 2. That would make our denominator 0. All right. Next up, let's find some points. Let's start with x-intercepts. What makes the numerator 0? That would be 1 and negative 4. And how about a y-intercept? Plug in 0. We would get negative 1 times 4. over negative 2, so that would be positive 2. Now this is weird, but we also have four quadrants in this graph. One, two, three, and the, this one up here, which we can't really see. And we can already see that this quadrant has points in it. So this graph is going to look something like this. Remember that this end is going to have to approach the EBA. And the other missing piece is actually up here. Now, I know this looks really bad, but up in this section is something like this, something like the one down here. So if you can fit it on your paper, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have some trouble doing that. But you can draw that in, so we fix that. Just to make sure you have it right, it's going to approach this vertical asymptote towards infinity, and then it's going to approach the EBA as x goes towards infinity there. Alright, so we did three different examples, and hopefully in class you'll get to do a whole lot more.